Attention! Americans have the freedom of choice, and your choice for professional wrestling should be the American Wrestling Federation. Santana taking on luscious Tommy Rich. We're gonna see Nails in action, also Hercules in action, and Bob Orton Jr. with Sir Oliver Humperdinck in his corner taking on gentleman Chris Adams. Take it away, we go to the ring with Billy Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for six rounds. Introducing first, the manager, Rico Suave. He represents from Nashville, Tennessee, weighing 247 pounds, luscious Tommy Rich. Well, here we go. What a very, very special and important week with the American Wrestling Federation as Rico Suave leads his man, luscious Tommy Rich, to the ring. Terry Taylor, the electricity, the excitement is in the air. Yes, it is, and I don't think there's one person in this building is cheering for Luscious Tommy Rich except for Rico Suave. But let's be honest, it speaks for itself. Former World Heavyweight Champion, he's in the semifinals. Tommy Rich has done what most people said he couldn't do. He got past Sergeant Slaughter by hook or by crook, and here he is going against probably the greatest Mexican athlete of all time. Well, there's no question about that. Enrico Suave has been gloating all week about this matchup. Uh, his opponent from Tacula, Mexico, weighed 239 pounds, Tito Santana! There he is, ladies and gentlemen, and the crowd ecstatic at the appearance of Tito Santana as he does battle and again in this six-round event against luscious Tommy Rich, Tito Santana, shaking hands with the fans about ringside. Everywhere he appears, every arena, every city, they just love this man. Yeah, and there he is kissing little babies, old women, and a few 18-year-old nubile young nymphs. He better keep his hands and lips off my girl. Do you know that in the American Wrestling Federation we have rounds? We have six four-minute rounds in this tournament. We also have corner men there to help their wrestlers. We have a one-minute break between each round. And right here, we're going into the semifinal. Touch of referee disqualification over the top rope DQ. That's disqualification for you uneducated Karshas. And also, a low blow is also a disqualification. Speaking of low blows, thanks for another shot. We're not four minutes into the program, and you're, you're doing it already. Every week, ladies and gentlemen, as this tournament has progressed, the fans have gotten more and more involved. And over the past week, the cards and the letters and the phone calls, the interest is at a fever pitch. And this is one reason why Tito Santana and Luscious Tommy Rich. You know, Tito Santana has had every major singles title in our great sport. He has never been a world champion. And I think that's why he's in the American Wrestling Federation to change all that. Well, no question about it. One of the odds-on favorites now in this tournament. And a great reversal into the hammerlock. And Ooh. Tommy Rich. Excuse me, sir. Wait a I'm custom made from head to toe. I'm a limousine riding, Learjet flying. Custom made son of a gun. And I just happen to be the greatest wrestler in the world. How's the wife and kids? Well, let me tell nice you. Nice to see you. I got to go take the hey. president to dinner. God bless you, sir. Where are you going? Who, who was it? Hey, come on, ben, Terry. Set. What? What was he doing here? That guy with the big nose and the blonde hair. What is he? I have. 
have no idea. Every week they surprise us here in the American Wrestling Federation. They all have an interest in this championship tournament. Wannabes, they're all wannabes. Well, Tommy Rich now joined with the fans, with the referee. He better pay attention to business right now. Don't worry about Suave or anything else. Tito Santana is the opponent in this six-rounder. Do you see how the tempo is slowed down? Both competitors know they have twice as many rounds. They have six four-minute rounds, and that means five, cars. you count them, five one-minute rest periods. Well, I'm watching Tommy Rich here complaining about a yank of the hair, which is ludicrous. Oh, and now he wants his hand raised? Please. Come on, that has to be the Rico Suave influence. Yeah, it probably is, but you see Jesse Hernandez trying to restore some order. He understands that this semifinal match is history making. Hey, Mrs. Karsh, how you doing? Quit waving at Tito. Boy, your wife is waving at everybody. Will you stop it? Back to the action at hand, ladies. Now, what, what advice? What Rico Suave possibly have for luscious Tommy Rich. If you win, I'll give you a bonus. Yeah, that may be it. That's all I think Tommy Rich is in it for anymore is the money. Look at it again now. Tommy Rich, livid, complaining to the referee that Tito Santana pulled the hair again. Well, you see what this is? This is psychological warfare. He gets the referee looking for that, and then that opens up avenues for him to do something that I know he'll do that's awful devious. Very smart to have Jesse Hernandez looking for one certain thing. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the American Wrestling Federation, the premier wrestling organization in the world today. You're watching Luscious Tommy Rich and Tito Santana. There's a block. Oh, a shot right to the bridge of the nose. And Tommy Rich backs off. He wants no part of this. He has Tito's Latin temper all on fire right now. Yeah, and he's back there. He's got 30 seconds left. We see the clock in the corner. Oh, Time stop it. Out. Timeouts in 24 seconds there, Liberace. Tommy Rich right now is in no hurry. He knows he has plenty of time, and there's a lot more strategy knowing that you have twice as many rounds. Well, this again, ladies and gentlemen, the human chest. Both men now using the clock. They're aware of the time situation. Ooh, Rich drills him again as we are down to the waning seconds of this round. And there it is now. Now, if he touches him, that's a fine. Absolutely. And this time, luscious Tommy Rich indeed does back off. Hey, you see the corner man right there with the stool has the water for him, and Tito Santana's having trouble getting back to his corner. I'll tell you, Tommy Rich opened up on him there at the end. And ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. The action continues. Rich in the ring with Santana. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're set for round two. The American Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament continues. Luscious Tommy Rich, who spent that rest period on a stool in the corner, being attended to by Rico Suave. Now look at Rich. Yeah. He wants to make amends. He wants to apologize. He opened up on Tito Santana. Now he wants to be buddies because Tito came out there with that fire in his eye. Now, April 29th, you're going to have at Cicero at the stadium the American Wrestling Federation, ring girls, corner men, the greatest athletes in professional wrestling in the American Wrestling Federation, and Indiana and Hammond at the Civic Center on the 30th, the next night at 7.30, the same thing, corner men, ring girls, the greatest wrestlers in the American Wrestling Federation, wrestling of the 21st century. Be there or be unaware. Look at Santana now with a great series of moves on Luscious Tommy Ray. To insist that Tito is pulling the hair, so is Rico Suave, who should keep his hands out of his own hair for heaven's sakes. That pompadour or whatever, that bouffant hairstyle of his. Shut up a second, Karsh. I gotta also say that kids under 12 are half price, and as fertile as you are, that's gonna save you a fortune. <laughs> You've been talking to the ex again, haven't you? Oh boy, have I ever. She says a lot of good stuff about you. I'll bet. All in one sentence. That's correct. Back to the action, ladies and gentlemen. Rich trying to extricate himself from the hold, but he does not. Tito Santana, with that bulldog tenacity, continues to work on the arm, and now he's forced to break the hold. Did you see the way the way Tommy Rich did that, ladies and gentlemen, is fundamental, fundamentally wrong. He tried to roll with his arm across his body. There's no leverage that way. It's got to be behind you where you can roll the guy over your body, and that's what allowed Tito Santana, with that bulldog tenacity, to hang on. Well, that Tommy Rich is in great shape, isn't he? 
That guy at one time was a world heavyweight champion. He took all the shortcuts. He let himself go, and now he has to have somebody like Rico Suave in his corner so he can be in the championship picture. Oh. How does he do it? Well, I don't know. He certainly isn't getting any physical fitness tips from Ooh, Suave. Man. Oh, look at this now. Training punches Santana on low. Look at that right hand. Oh, he is on fire. Tito whips him into the buckle. High back body drop. Oh, man, in for the cover. Kai Watt, come on, hook the leg, Tito. No. Well, I tell you what, I not really shouldn't be saying that about Tommy Rich, because I've had every muscle head in every gym from Boise to Bangkok telling me because they can bench press 300 pounds, they can be a professional wrestler. It takes more than that. It takes skill, desire, leverage, and you also have to have the heart the size of Dallas, Texas. And right here, Tommy Rich at one time had that heart. Now he has Rico Suave. Oh, what a difference that is. And Terry, I've got to ask you, certainly you've had those 15 glorious years in the ring. It appears right now the game plan of Tito Santana continue to work on that arm, take away one of the weapons of luscious Tommy Rich. Do you know why he's working on that left arm? Tell me. Because Tommy Rich uses that luscious DDT. He hooks it with that left hand over the head of his opponent, driving his face into the mat. Oh, there's oh, a face that looks like it's been driven into several mats. Yep. See that cheap shot? Oh. Jesse Hernandez trying to enforce the rules, get in between the competitors. What Jesse did wrong, and I'm telling everybody else what they do wrong, but he had his head down. The referee, the last thing he says during the instructions is protect yourself at all times. And he had his head down, and he wasn't aware. And as we go into the last half minute of this round, Luscious Tommy Rich now again methodic. Wait a second. Oh, neck neck breaker. breaker. Oh, that could do it. See that neck snap? That, is a, that, that knocks a man out. Tito Santana right now, half his body. I guarantee he's asleep. Was that three? That was not a count of three. Boy, was it close. There's the elbow right to the top of the head once again. Tommy Rich is, we're down to seven seconds now. Tito. Good move. Oh, a double, double lariat. Lariat. Look at that. Both men. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mick. You're play by play, man. Both men are down. Ladies and gentlemen, as the round comes to a conclusion, Rico Suave enters the ring to check on the welfare of his man. Yeah, and you see both men in the middle of the ring, almost in a tangle of heat. Ring girls in there, she's smarter and tougher and braver than all of us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you talk about an even matchup. Stay with us. Round three coming up, Rich and Santana. All right, we are back for round three. We got him on the ropes. This Taco Bunda can't beat you. He's not that good. Oh, talk about expert comments. What in the world does this guy know about professional wrestling and calling names and everything else? Oh! He clocked him. I guess with him covering up the body of Tommy Rich with his girth, Tito had no idea what he had left. Tommy Rich, luscious as he is, blasted out of the starting block, shot to the head. And he's right back on the attack on Tito Santana. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for six rounds. If there is no clear-cut winner in the ring, the referee's decision determines the victory. And Jesse Hernandez, the referee, had to do that once, and he had to do it for Chris Adams, who will be in the next semifinal match this hour going against Bob Orton Jr. Referee forces the break. And again, Tommy Rich grabs the ropes. Hernandez again says break the hole. Now that made no sense to me. If you're covering a man, why would you grab the ropes and risk the referee catching you and making you get off your opponent who's on his back? Well, luscious Tommy Rich now posturing to the crowd, nodding to Rico Suave. Oh. Now he goes back on the attack. It's so important, this matchup. Yes, it is. And you know that next week we're going to have a special referee? It's going to be a 12-round encounter and a special referee to be named to make sure that it's right down the middle. And Zapperstein is going to tell us who the referee is. He will appoint that referee. And, of course, Terry, you're talking about the championship match in the American Wrestling Federation. Absolute history on your television screens next week. That's right. So there's got to be a winner. The whole tournament's been on television. It's going to be one of these two men taking on the winner of the Bob Orton Jr. and Chris Adams match, which is next on this television program. Santana wow. has unloaded a series of shots on Tommy Rich. And right now, Tito clearly in control of this one. Oh, he's ramming his hand into that top buckle. You see the, the acceleration of Tito Santana. Wow. He is sudden as a hiccup. In for the cover. One, two, oh, just got that Whoa. shoulder up. When you
you're laying your body on a man like that, you've got to secure the outside arm, and Tito didn't do that. Oh, and he got out of the way, did Tommy Rich. Santana head first into the turnbuckle. And that's part of what I was saying is that acceleration and, and speed the pace up, you set yourself up for things like this where you can miss. You know, Terry, I am looking at Tommy Rich and thinking of the Tommy Rich of a few years back, the transformation, the attitude change, the vengeance, the, the all-out brutality of this man. Something to behold. Yeah, and kind of it's kind of disgusting. Because at one time, kids looked up to this guy, they liked him, they thought they wanted to be like Tommy Rich, and not even Tommy Rich, I think, wants to be... Oh, look at this! Tommy Rich has got a cut opened up on his head. He's bleeding above his left or his right eye. That shows you what kind of competition. The referee's going to have to monitor this situation to make sure there's not too much blood. Two count! Uh, he Was that did... three? Was that three? No. No, two and a half, and he did not hook the leg. Once again, you know, you talk... Wait a second now! Wait a minute. Clearly, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Rich went into his trucks for a foreign object, that tape or a chain. I'm not sure what he has there. That's the tape off his wrists. If you take that tape and roll it up, see how it's in real small around? It makes it very hard to break and oh. very strong. Well, it's clearly hanging there right now in front of referee Jesse Hernandez. Well, with the perspiration and the effort, that tape sometimes comes off when it's wet. Referee can't watch everything. Tito Santana going to the top. Is there enough time in this round? Watch the clock, ladies and gentlemen. He's up to the top. High risk maneuver. Oh, he missed it and hurt himself. Tommy Rich following up, doesn't hear the bell. DDT, oh, oh my. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a man who's very interested in the outcome of this match is standing by with Ken Resnick. Chris, I've certainly enjoyed sitting back here watching this match between Tito Santana and Luscious Tommy Rich with you, but I'm not certain if your mind is more scouting this match or more thinking ahead to your upcoming semifinal match with Cowboy Bob Orton. Well, right now, Ken, you know, I'm thinking about Bob Orton, Bob Orton, Bob Orton. You know, I made it this far, and I feel honored to have made it this far, but I know now that my work is cut out. Six rounds with Bob Orton, the second-generation wrestler, is enough for any man. But you know what? I'm ready and waiting, and if I get through this one, I'm in the final. And then I will feel good, Ken. And certainly the finals could well be up your alley. That a 12-round match. At any rate, let's get back for the next round between Tito Santana and Luscious Tommy Rich. Well, back we are, ladies and gentlemen, and that DDT after the bell certainly has taken its toll on Tito Santana. Yeah, he is down. Tommy Rich gets rid of that wrist tape. He doesn't need it anymore. Tito Santana, oh, I can't believe that he's going for a, a swipe. It might be a submission now after that DDT. It jams the neck. It hits the forehead down on the mat. See that knee into the cervical vertebrae? Pull it back on the chin. Tommy Rich showing the wear and tear also with that gash on his head. Well, I have to wonder if President Paul Elperstein is going to do anything about that after the bell. DDT, Rich climbing to the top rope now, very slowly. Santana tries to get to his feet, and he does. He's got Rich in a very precarious position. Oh, oh, my. Three quarters of the way across the ring. I can't believe it. What strength, what stamina and recuperation by Tito Santana. Oh, this matchup is tremendous. There's the sleeper hole. We oh. saw how he got Mr. Hughes down with this. We know how effective it is, and we know how great he is at getting it on his man. Look at Tommy Rich. He's on his way out. Oh, there's no question. Those eyes are closing. He's Wait a second now. Keep that bulbous individual off the ring apron. He's distracted the referee once again. He's done this the whole tournament. Man, I can't stand when he gets up like that. Tito Santana can't stand it either. Well, he's had enough, as I think all the wrestling fans around the country have, watching that guy week in and week out. Oh, man. I don't want to bury the referee, but why did it take Jesse Hernandez so long to get down there? Was Rico Suave keeping him again? What is this? Wait a minute now. He handed him something. I didn't get a good look at it. Well, he clearly did. Our camera certainly caught it, and he nails Tito Santana. Tito went down like he was shot. But look, look what he's doing. That's a chain. Oh, come on. You wrap it around your head. It's like brass knuckles. Wait a minute. Sergeant Slaughter has appeared at ringside. He's taken away the chain. Certainly the Sarge had a score to settle with Luscious Tommy Rich. Tito rolls him up two, three. He got, he got the victory. Sarge got his vengeance. Oh, oh, oh. Poetic justice. I love it. Well, Luscious Tommy Rich handed that chain by Rico Suave. Victimized.
Christ in his matchup with Lunch as Tommy Rich saw the chain and came running to the ring. And here you see it. He's wrapping that chain around his head. We said it. It's like brass knuckles. He hides it from the referee, but puts it right in reach of Sergeant Slaughter. He defeated Sergeant Slaughter. We all saw how he did it. He stole it. And there you have Sarge exacting his revenge. Tito Santana in the first ever finals for the American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship and got there this way. Well, you see Tito rolling him off the referee. Johnny on the spot counts the victory. Thank heaven for Sergeant Slaughter, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely incredible. Right now standing by with Tito Santana is our friend Ken Resnick. There is no question Sergeant Slaughter has always been America's hero, and I think today, certainly, he is among Tito Santana's favorites. Tito? That's exactly right, Ken. You know, Tommy Rich, now you know what it feels like. I, too, have friends in the American Wrestling Federation. Tito, you've got to feel good. You're in the championship match for the American Wrestling Federation title. You'll be facing the winner of the other semifinal match, between gentlemen Chris Adams and Cowboy Bob Orton. That's exactly right. You know, Ken, I've overcome some big obstacles in this tournament. Now the biggest obstacle is ahead of me. The winner between Cowboy Bob Orton and Chris Adams, two of the finest wrestlers in the American Wrestling Federation in the world. And not only will you have to be in shape for this championship match, which I understand is going to be a 12-round match, you have to be mentally prepared, and I'm ready. Tito Santana in the Fiva! All right, ladies and gentlemen, back we are with the American Wrestling Federation. This belt is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from Dearborn, Michigan, weighing 202 pounds, Jimmy B. I love that guy. Toughest guy on earth, or whatever he is, but he's also the unluckiest man in the history of this planet. Because, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent is right there. It's alive. Oh, uh, I want to tell you something. This man frightens me, even from my perch here at ringside. I don't want to get within 10 yards of him. And already, oh, poor Jimmy V. That bell rang just in time. Oh. When was the last time you saw a man in a in a corner to corner chokehold? He's an innovator, isn't he? That nails. I thought you meant Jimmy V. V stands for velocity. Oh, he about dislodged that turnbuckle cam. He broke the quake cam. That's coming out of his check. If there's anything left after the medical bills. Well, you talk about sending a boy to do a man's job. I'm sorry. This is this is a mismatch. Give Jimmy V credit for guts, but he is being tossed around. He just threw Jimmy V and Billy Silverman, the referee. Did you see that? I sure did. And there's a very scientific choke by Nails. This man, Terry, is an absolute... He's nuts. I I've said it before. He's a bona fide psycho. You say that under your breath with him out of sight. He's looking at me. I don't like that at all. This guy, and, and you know, sometimes it makes me have less than uh, good feelings about our justice system because this guy's not in the slam. Oh, hey, Jim. Sunset Flip, we've seen a wrestling move. Oh, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> Man. You know something? I have a Frisbee that doesn't go as far or as high as Jimmy V is against Nails who absolutely is decimating this poor youngster. He follows him in, picks him up by the head now. You can only wonder what's next. How can this kid still be on his feet? Oh, he tried, see, he tried to run underneath that choke. He saw it coming. That fight or flight instinct kicked in. It's not enough. Now look at Nails, look at the referee. The referee gets up off his knees and changes position. I don't blame you, Silverman. You know, he's not trying to hide this chokehold. Some wrestlers will try to distract the referee, maybe shield the choke. This is right in front of Silverman. Nails doesn't care. Oh, he's got it. What is that? Is that a chokehold? I can't see it from here. Yep, he's got that artery with that one forearm, then the other forearm forcing the hit. That's a choke. Oh, it's like second. a sleeper. It is a sleeper hold. The referee calls for the bell. This one is over. And Jimmy V has had it. Come on. He's going to. 
Oh, he That's took dangerous. a serious injury to this young man. Come on, Wait Dale. a minute. You beat more serious injury to this young man. Oh, this man. kid right here, Jimmy V, I feel bad for him. He came in trying to make a name for himself in the toughest sport in the world, the American Wrestling Federation. He's motionless, getting dragged up by Nails. Nails is picking up a man who is out on his feet. He's threatening to punch him right to the jaw. This is humiliation for this youngster on top of the physical punishment he's taken. Oh, Terry, take a look. Oh, Here, no! Right there, ladies and gentlemen, he just had a projectile throw. Now, wait a second, this isn't the instant replay. We're back into the ring. He's thrown a chair in. Jimmy V has a move. Silverman, the referee's counting, but what's he doing? Well, he's doing nothing to stop Nails. Oh! oh no, come on, he had to crack that sternum. There's no doubt this kid is in serious trouble right now. I don't understand this at all. Billy Silverman, the referee, you got to know Zephyrstein's oh going to find Nails. I wish I made a year half once. Nails is going to be fine. He doesn't care about fines. This guy is certifiable. Well, let's take a look at a second replay. Look at him pick him up like he weighed five pounds. Back into that chokehold. Something's going to have to be done, and it's going to have to be Zephyrstein finding this guy off the planet. Well, security has gotten nails away from the ring, thank goodness. This guy is absolutely sick. There's no getting around it. Do you see right here, Billy Anderson didn't want to get into the ring, but boy, I don't blame him. Hey, my favorite wrestler, Lightning Rod. Very imposing looking young man, I must say. Big guy. professional wrestling there are managers and then there are strategists and there are diabolical individuals like Sheik Adnan El Casey with all his oil money behind him oh he has purchased the talents of this monster of a man in Hercules yeah and I get a good look at him in the back and if he weighs 285 pounds and I'm a lightweight I'm about 186 then. This guy is big. And Lightning Rod in the opposite side of the ring certainly has to be concerned here. He knows that a victory over Hercules will propel him in the ranks of professional wrestling. But how would you like to get in the ring and face this man with Sheik in his corner? I wouldn't because Hercules lost in the quarterfinals, as did Nails. They're both jockeying for position to beat or meet whoever is going to be the first ever American Wrestling Federation champion. This match is very important to Hercules' career, as it is Lightning Rods. Well, on his best day, Hercules is not a nice guy. And the frustration that he's gone through in this championship tournament has added fuel to the fire. And he's a man on a mission he is possessed. Yeah, and you can see that every match on the American Wrestling Federation show that we have here, the Warriors of Wrestling, is an even match. It's an important match. And there's consequences involved in the outcome of every match. They're all pointing to one thing, and that's the championship. Oh, follows him in with the clothesline. Does Hercules and Sheik Adnan LKC on the outside of the ring shouting encouragement to his man. You know, the Sheik will talk about how he hates Americans, but boy, he's latched on to a few, a few prizes in the American Wrestling Federation. Yeah, because they're the vehicle to get him where he needs to go. He wants to rule professional wrestling. He can't do it, but he thinks his money can. There's a big chop right across the chest, and Lightning Rod is fizzling right now as he tries to take the measure of Hercules. Oh, good move in there. Behind. Beautiful maneuver. Oh, close line, ineffectual, couldn't knock him over. Lightning Rod tries a second time. You can hear the body smacking, but he's waiting too long. Oh, he, he took him down. down. Shoulders into 
solar plexus, driving the wind out with a lariat in the corner. Beautiful right there, power slam, and follows it up with his boom, the power bomb. He's looking for the soon to be crowned American Wrestling Federation champion. And ladies and gentlemen, we want you to stay with us because more semi-final action is coming up in just moments. Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. gets into the ring with the gentleman from England, Chris Adams. Wrestling fans, it has reached a fever pitch right now. Semi-final action in the American Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament continues. Terry, it is incredible in this building. The fans on the edge of their seats. Kansas City, weighing 235 pounds, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Yeah, well, I told you before, we thought he would be the one who ever won that matchup between him and Johnny Gunn. And maybe Humperdinck was the difference. But that Humperdinck couldn't look good in the dark room, could he? Oh, that is one frightening-looking man. Yeah, but that right there is the Terminator. He's the one that gets in the ring. He's the one that does all the work. And Humperdinck is the guidance. Maybe he is the distraction. That guy right there is as solid as they come fundamentally. And you know, we make fun of Humperdinck, but he has guided men to championships over the years. He's putting a lot of stakes into Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. in the American Wrestling Federation. And his opponent from Stratford on Avon in England. We 235 pounds, gentlemen, Chris Adams! Everybody thinks that because Chris Adams is from England, where the round system was originated, and he has the odds on chance to get in. Well, he has an opportunity here to make history. One of these two competitors next week in a 12-round match with a special referee is going to wrestle for the first time ever American Wrestling Federation Championship. Either Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. or Chris Adams takes on Tito Santana. And ladies and gentlemen, referee Gary Gronke already. Oh, goody. Gronke. Leave him alone. Already he is admonishing Oliver Humperdinck, telling him very plainly, you stay on the outside of the ring. Do not interfere in this one. Let the two men decide who is the better man. As Orton originally powered Adams back into the corner, they're jockeying for position, and now Orton with two shots now, and three. Oh, he's hammering away, but now look at Adams trying to fight his way out of the corner. Boy, these are all legal blows, except Adams is in a corner. And look at him light up Bob Orton with those forearms. He's spaghetti leg. And look at that, though. He was playing a little bit of opossum. You have two of the greatest athletes in any sport, not just professional wrestling, tremendously conditioned, both Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. and gentleman Chris Adams, and they are trading shot for shot, punch for punch, here in the early going. This is not a battle of skill, it's a battle of wills. Both men are gonna see what the other guy's got and what he's gonna give. And each guy is given 100% and taking and given no quarter. Chris Adams missed that turnbuckle. Look, how's he doing? That's called a finish cravat. That's an English move, and it looks like he slips it into a sleeper. Referee right on top of it, making sure that that forearm hasn't slipped into a chokehold. See how Orton's trying to get his chin down and push the arm up with that hand to get it off of his neck and up on his jawbone. Tremendous camera work as usual with the American Wrestling Federation. The fans watching this one intently. As you said, it's next week for one of these two individuals with Tito Santana, the first ever champion Boy. in the American Wrestling Federation. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mick, that what a great matchup. Tito Santana against Chris Adams. Tito Santana versus Cowboy Bob Orton. Either one main event anywhere in the world. Boy, he stiff like that move right there. Gave him that foot, we know that means. That ends the glory to the back of the head, made famous by Antonio Inoki. Chris has been in Japan, great tour over there and decided to come back and get into these finals. And he's made it to the semifinal. Ooh, drills Orton to the back of the head. You know, Terry, you mentioned the possible matchups. In either case, Adams against Santana or Orton against Santana, whether you like the style of Bob Orton or not, you have three tremendous wrestlers. They know the holds, the counter holds, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, we told everybody we were gonna have the greatest wrestlers in a different format, round system. Larry and Darabai, Chris Adams, got his body in, not as much as he wanted. Snap Mare over, goes into a rear chin lock, and back into that slip.
sleeper, Orton's got that chin down. But we were talking about we were going to bring people wrestling. We brought them law and order, and we're giving two athletes an opportunity to find out who the better man is. And next week, we're going to find out who the number one dude is on the ranch. And congratulations in order to Paul Alperstein, the president of the American Wrestling Federation, and everybody involved. This is what it's all about, and wrestling fans all over the country continue to send in the cards and letters. They are responding tremendously to the AWF. And I don't blame it because we have the greatest wrestlers, and I think we have a new format. It's new, it's different. The round system kicked to the face by Orton after he stuck a finger in the eye of Chris Adams. You can hear the people giving their disapproval. Chris Adams, I'll tell you, he's been in trouble before, but this guy right here, Bob Orton, is a wily veteran who knows how to close a deal. Throw them right to the forehead that time. We are down to just about 20 seconds now remaining in this round, everybody. This has been a seesaw battle, back and forth. Got him up in a suplex. Chris Adams blocked that. He's got him up. Oh. Bam, nine seconds left. Roll over, Chris, go for the win. Hurry up. He's got him covered. Oh, kicked out anyway. And that is the end of the round. Yeah, it is. Now, we have Ken Rizdek standing by with a very, very unhappy Tommy Rich. Well, thank you, Mick Carson, and Terry Taylor, and I guess you could say, gentlemen, if you will, in the immortal words of Sergeant Slaughter, what goes around comes around. You know, you're pretty smirky there. You better watch yourself while you're standing next to the luscious one. We just got robbed. We got robbed again, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. We're only here a short time, the AWF, and already people are pulling shots around our backs. Tell them, Tommy. You know, it's a stinking shame's what it is. Sergeant Slaughter, where's Mr. Paul Eberstein now? You come out and cause me to get beat. Nobody shows their face. Well, let me tell you something, Slaughter. You bring your big self down. Paul Eberstein ain't got to sign a match anytime, anywhere, any place. You bring it down, and you better have a bunch of flags with you. Let's get back to ringside for round two. A luscious Tommy Rich, red-faced. You talk about an intensity level. He's going right through the roof. Yeah, he's upset. He thinks Sergeant Slaughter caused him that match. He did it himself. If he wouldn't have had that chain, Slaughter wouldn't have been at ringside. And we are into round number two of the six-round semifinal matchup. Gentlemen, Chris Adams out of Stratford on Avon in England and Kansas City's Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Yeah, you have a cheer in USA. You have the girls there pulling for Chris Adams. We've got stars from all over the world here. Everybody wants to be in the American Wrestling Federation. And that right there was a pretty good shot by Chris Adams, an illegal forearm. Absolutely, Adams now tried a little bit slow to follow up there. Orton caught him with the boot and then the elbow right to the face. And now once again, the tide of battle has turned once again as it has so often during this match. Yes, it has. Look at Orton holding him upside down. Let that blood drain into his head. Oh. Power slam follows up with his own body weight, about 237 pounds. Both these guys are about the same weight. Orton's got a little more experience as he drives that knee into the side of the face of Chris Adams. Underhook on the arm. He's got, a, got the head hooked. I can't tell from his position. Got his chin buried into the chest of Chris Adams trying to get a pin. You know, we've talked about the second generation heritage of Cowboy Bob Orton Jr., his father, Bob Orton Sr., as rugged as his son, very similar in style, one of the great stars of the 50s and 60s, and we mentioned before, Terry, Bob Orton Jr. has certainly surpassed his father's greatness. It's evidenced he's battling for the right to be in the championship final. Yeah, great bridge here by Chris Adams. Turns it into a snap mare, a beautiful escape. Oh, 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 oh. Elbow to the top of the head, and see that look of disgust on the face of Orton? It lit him up, and he was very unhappy about it. But you talk about families, Chris Adams' older brother, Neil Adams, was a three-time golden uh, gold medal winner in judo from England, and I've heard that Chris Adams can still whip his brother. And we got a brief look at Oliver Humperdinck outside the ring. Thank Don't goodness. Don't ever forget about his presence. He's a very, very dangerous man to have about ringside. In the corner, referee calls for the break. Orton decides, oh, I thought he was going to whip him into the opposite corner, but he caught him with the clothesline. I think Chris Adams was accelerating because he was going to have uh, maybe an offensive move out of that corner. And 
the, this experience of Bob Orton Jr. Oh. using that top rope as a weapon. It's legal, you can do it, and if you may as well, because the part of the ring is either gonna be your friend or your foe. Once again, we remind you this oh, is- man. Oh, man! He's ripping his face apart, for heaven's sakes. We remind you this is the American Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament. Whoever wins this one, ladies and gentlemen, will battle Tito Santana in a 12-round championship bout next week. Yeah, we'll have a special referee to make sure it's right down the middle. It'll be 12 four-minute rounds. We're going to give the whole show to it, so we will have a winner. You know, I've been asking President Paul Elferstein for a raise. Well, forget that situation. Who, in fact, the referee is going to be? He's tight-lipped. He will not say. I'm surprised he's tight-lipped about it. Oh, man. Driving the face of Chris Adams into the mat, almost in a pile-driver-like maneuver. Oh. Well, he had lunch eggs for breakfast. If they weren't scrambled before, they are now. We are down to about 13 seconds right now. The package. Chris Adams. referee. Two. that time, Terry. Rocky was groggy. Elbow to the top of the head. Round three coming. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, as Orton continued the assault momentarily, we are in fact going to round three. This has been an even matchup through the first two rounds. The intensity level has not changed one bit. Stay with us, everybody. We're coming back for the conclusion. This is it, wrestling fans, the third and very, very important round coming up. Chris Adams and Bob Orton Jr. fighting to stay alive and get into the ring next week with Tito Santana for the American Wrestling Federation first ever championship. Look at Orton going into that boxing now. Chris Adams needs, I was just sitting here watching this in awe. Chris Adams has his mouth open. That's the best way in the world to get knocked out. Super kick, oh. super kick, and he's 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 out, but he's on his feet. Oh, give Orton credit. Wait a second, oh, instinct. He that threw. was instinct. You bet, absolutely, because he was out on his feet, and he had enough savvy to grab Adams and throw him through the ropes. Have you noticed that Chris Adams' super kick has lost a little of its oop as this tournament goes on and on and on? He's one of the smaller guys at 235 pounds, and the pounding he's taking in these matches subsequent to this semifinal has started to show its effects. And Orton works on the back of Chris Adams. Once again, Adams down on the floor, outside the ring. The referee tells Orton to keep him back. Give him a chance to get back into the ring. Well, I guess he's gonna help him back in. No, nope. oh! Second. Adams over the top now, attempt a sunset flip. Oh, he sat, sat right down. Him. But he's still got the ropes. Wait a minute now. Oh, Terry Taylor, come on. Don't blame me, I didn't do it. With the help of Oliver Humperdinck, take what? a look at this. See that, you can see the impact to the back of the head. Chris Adams gets Bob Orton Jr. up in the air for this soup play. Well executed, you can see how he lands. Power slam here, Orton using all of his weight right under the chest. Great matchup, I mean, we've got highlight after highlight strangling Chris Adams, and here we see the ending of the match. Chris Adams goes back, Grunke goes down, what does his job, counts the shoulders. And Bob Orton Jr. advances to the finals, he's standing by with Ken Resnick. Perhaps we should begin calling Sir Oliver Humperdinck a soothsayer. He predicted Bob Orton in the finals, and so it has become. <laughs> now, was there a hotel in Omaha missing a shower curtain? Hey, don't get smart with me, killer kid. I told everybody out here exactly what was going to happen, and exactly that's what happened. Today, gentlemen, Chris Adams went down to defeat, and that puts us right into that cherry position of the finals of the AWF oh. tournament right here next week. And in the finals, Tito Santana. Well, take a look at the guy that's going to beat Santana, too. Yeah, Cowboy Bob Orton, the beatings Tito Santana has taken lately, a 12-round match, the way you like to wrestle, that could favor you. That's exactly right, but I'm not going to sell Tito Santana short because he's a tough man. Anybody who has the 
desire, the wants, the needs that Santana has. Anyone who would swim across the filthy Rio Grande just to come to this country has got to have a lot of guts, Daddy. And I realize that, that Santana, you wouldn't even have been here if it wasn't for slaughter. And let me tell you something, Daddy, you're stepping in there, man, with just as much desire. You're mine. Welcome back, everybody. This tournament started out with 16 of the greatest wrestlers in the world. And Terry Taylor, it has come down to two. Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Boy, you look at this bracketing right here. It's who's who in professional wrestling. We started with 16. We ended up here. You see, it was Tito Santana this week against Luscious Tommy Rich. Tito won. Then you see Cowboy Bob Orton. He beats Gentleman Chris Adams with the help of that troll. And ladies and gentlemen, next week, history will be made here on the American Wrestling Federation as Tito Santana takes on Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, it has come down to this. That's your 12-round championship matchup for Ken Resnick and Terry Taylor. This is Mick Karsh. We'll see you with the championship matchup next week. You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, you're dismissed. <laughs>